Guess who is with us now? We, yes, I am we, so jealous because one of my favorite men in the entire world is sitting next to you. And that's, listen you to know, him. you're next to him way too often as it is. I'm next to him every day. It's yeah. Morley Safer. Tell everyone who it is. Morley Safer. <laughs> and sitting next to Morley Safer is our own wow, 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 Liz Smith. And both of them know Mike Wallace extremely well. Uh, so we've asked him to come along, and we're just going to sit and remember, Mike, you knew him too, Cynthia. I did. I did. It, 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 it seemed impossible. It didn't matter that, you know, Mike was well into his 90s. It seems impossible that he's he's now gone, gone on. I mean, he was such an institution for all of us, such a good friend, and, and you and know. made such an indelible mark. Yep. We all owe him a debt. If you're a, journalist, if you're a journalist, you owe Mike Wallace a debt. So let's start with Morley. Morley, you worked with him longest. Um, what what are you remembering now today? Uh, just a a whole parade of of the best part of a, of a century's stories. I mean, and stories not not just those hard nosed, in your face, no holds barred Wallace interviews, but all the art stuff. You know, I do a lot of art stuff. Mike did did the real giants Horowitz, uh, he did Barbara Streisand. The list just goes on and on and on. And <clears throat> as much as Mike is known for the uh, for the obvious stuff, you, you, if the you zinger. look if you look at at some of those stories that we've been looking at them for the last three or four days, uh, the joy he got out of those other stories. And uh, uh, it was just written all over his face. Mm-hmm. If you look at his at him when he's listening to Horowitz playing oh. Stars and Stripes Forever, it's what? just sheer joy. Well, and he he actually falls in love with those people, and he lets you see it, which you, obviously he doesn't do in his other work. So you see the warm and playful side. Liz goes well, actually, back. Well, Leslie, I hate to say it, but I think we're wrong. I think the person who worked with him the longest was Liz. Liz, oh, I was about to interrupt you. <laughs> right, when dinosaurs were still crawling, well, were yes. Most people are not before still were motor alive. Ca- before there were motor cars. <laughs> I uh, worked for Mike in 1953. I was about as green as a gourd. But he wasn't then the Mike Wallace he became. But he was, I, th- this will astound people, he was the kindest, most sentimental, gentlest, most wonderful mentor I ever had. He was great to me, while at the same time he treated me like he was my father, and so he was free to criticize my clothes and the way I acted. And when I finally got in the gossip entertainment business, he spent the rest of his life trying to get me to get out of it and be a serious journalist. And who do you think you're kidding? And you can't do all of this junk. And then he, (laughs) at the height of the Trump divorce, which was a big story, a non-story for three months, he gave a party. And he said, you are the star of this party, but don't tell anybody. So I went to his house. He has all of these people from the Times, every network, the people I admired and adored. And they all, you know, jumped on me and started asking me questions. And you were and the Mike star. was over in the corner going, <laughs> I did this. It's ridiculous. Then he said, you don't deserve it. But come to Thanksgiving dinner. But Lizzie, tell about the show that you produced with with his then wife, Buff Cobb, right? Yes, we actually went off the air and ended the show because he and Buffy got a divorce. And he was insanely jealous of this woman who was uh, sort of famous herself. She was the grandchild of a They co-anchored? They were character. like Cynthia and me, co-anchors on the radio show? Yes, they're okay. very like you I'll and Cynthia. Her. And uh, he was so jealous of her, he'd come in the office and attack me and say, where is Buffy? She said she was going to Bergdorf's. I think she's uptown in Harlem with somebody. Mm. And I would say, no, she's not. <laughs> and you were well, in the anyway, middle. Anyway, they divorced, and let me just say one thing about him. He loved women, but he was the madman era, you know, the example. So he liked to pop a brazier or two or tease you wow. or mildly He, he didn't get you. over that. And he would always <laughs> ask me about sex. He wanted me to talk about 
things I knew nothing about, like threesomes and what do you suppose people do? And I mean, they just couldn't get enough information and did you judge see, it. Did you see any of that at 60 Minutes, any of what Liz is talking about? You're That's, asking me if I, I saw it? You're the one who can answer that. Well, I can answer it, but I wanted to see if you saw any of that of, sort of, of Of course. I mean, soft. I'm quite honest, you know, soft what? Well, the gentle kind of all of the... the oh, the, the, yeah, some, but I think there was another side to Mike, which I don't have to remind you, Leslie. <laughs> um, oh, uh, I mean, he, he was... I don't know quite what the word is. Shameless, I guess. Yeah, yeah. good um, word. Good. And, good word. And... Uh, uh, you know, I'm not the most, shall we say, elegant man in the world, but Mike used language uh, that made me blush. <laughs> uh, and, and he he would put on, and as Lizzie knows, as you all know, that innocent look after he said something absolutely disgusting. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but but can I say something? I actually saw. Both sides. I saw what Liz is talking about because he also mentored me and was wonderful to me. And he did this to young people. Um, he would take us aside and give us tips and call us into his office. And he called me and what's talking about shameless. He said, when you ask a tough question, you have to be shameless. You can't yeah. show the audience you're embarrassed by mm-hmm. asking it. And he was giving tips and being wonderful. And then I saw the other side yeah. where he stole stories from you, <laughs> stole one from me. Uh, he was just he. It was all out. There was there was almost no governor on the man. You know? Well, uh, precisely. I mean, I, I always told him he needed a thermostat. <laughs> he didn't have one. <laughs> he did not have a thermostat.